He says, quote, let's have an amnesty from the left and the right on every made up, fake, totally insincere, play acted, hurt, insult, slight and affront. If you see or hear something you don't like in the media, just go on with your life. I want to bring in another political comedian, Dino Vidala. And Dean, um, I'm assuming you're agreeing with Mr. Marr here, yes? I agree with him in principle. I mean, there is this war on comedy going on, and I think that's a war we have to get out of much sooner than years and years later. It's not helpful, and especially when it comes to political comedy and political figures. You know what? We have a great tradition in America of using comedy to raise issues, to, ch to challenge the status quo, challenge people in power. And I'm afraid that this kind of war on comedy is going to stifle that. So overall, I agree with Bill. There are I have a different of opinion, though, on some of the subtleties of what Bill said in his article today. Huh. Uh huh. Well, I'm going to ask you about uh, if you've had to, to issue, I guess, a mea culpa in the past. But let me just flip the script and just say, look, what if the what if the roles were reversed? Mm -hmm. Would the media go after an actor who joked about a black first lady? I think they probably would, to be honest with you. Uh, and it really depends on the tone and how they said it. But I think, and I'm going to be honest, Brooke, I think most Americans know the difference between someone being playful and someone being demonizing and hateful. And playful should be protected. We know that. So I think there could be something with the black. It was a joke about a, a black first lady, and it was mocking her. Rush Limbaugh has made fun of the first lady. Others have. There have been some pushback against that. But you know what? The joke was funny. He didn't mean anything. He was flipping the old thing from four years ago. Is America ready for a black president? It was just funny. I mean, I, I don't... And that's all it was. Just, it That's was all it funny, was, and, it was, and we know the difference is not hateful. I mean, come on, yeah. let's be honest. Was he being hateful? No, Newt Gingrich, man desperate to get in the media as his campaign is falling apart, his yeah. own party's rejecting him. He's coming to the rest of us like, no, this is why his own party's rejecting him. He's out of step. He's just wrong on this. Newt Gingrich is completely wrong on this issue. But let me bring this back to Bill Maher, because, you know, you have this sure. two-page two op-ed. It's, it's a great read, um, whether you agree with him or not. Uh, but, but, you know, isn't it a little bit self-serving? I mean, certainly, of all people, Bill Maher's been called on to apologize for many, many things. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. many, many offensive things. Neither remind you of what he said about Sarah Palin, which I will not repeat, you know? Right. Absolutely. And I wrote an op-ed for CNN called Stop the War on Terror just earlier this week, <laughs> defending Bill Maher's right to say that. When you're attacking a public figure, someone in politics, someone like Sarah Palin, who would run to be a heartbeat away from the leader of the free world, you know what? It comes with territory. We have to have that freedom to mock our elected officials, even with words I might not use or we don't like. That's life. Turn the, turn the channel, just like Bill Maher says. But when you're demonizing private citizens or making homophobic, racist remarks, you know, then you, you have to answer for that. That's life. What about and you? What about you? What have about you me? ever crossed the line, Dean, and said, walked, your, walked what you said back and said, look, I shouldn't have, I'm sorry. As a joke, you thought, initially. Sure, sure. I, I tweet things and I get pushback from my own Twitter followers mm -hmm. going, like, what are you doing? This is wrong. Or, or on Facebook. It's really there. The difference is, frankly, I'll be completely brutally honest. If you're famous, you're held to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. I can get away with it. My fellow comics who are not really known in the clubs of New York, they're really talented, funny people, can say much worse things than you've ever heard on these TV shows or the comments in question. But when you're famous, you know what? You're on TMZ, you're hiring publicists. The joke crosses from killing the audience to possibly killing your career. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge when you're famous. To me, it's more about the subject matter, to be honest. Political comedy must be protected like political speech. It's that important. Look at the great history we have in America. Richard Pryor. Look at Lenny Bruce went to jail for cursing in New York City. Can you believe this? In mm. the 60s. You know, the world has changed a lot. And Jon Stewart, Stephen Colbert, Chris Rock, they've raised comedy beyond making people laugh. They're actually affecting public opinion. And actually educating people, would you say? Absolutely. Of, and that's, we can't lose that. No, I There's know. Gotta be, sometimes you've got to allow some insulting things, things you might not like to hear, for the good of, of freedom of expression. That's what we need to protect in America. Dino Badella, I appreciate it. Thank you Thanks so for much me, for bro. coming on. Um, now to this, the young man.